Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video. If this is your first time here, welcome. Usually what I do on my channel is show off a lot of my comic book collection. So if you want, if you're interested in seeing some of those, by all means, uh, feel free to go through and look at my other videos. I usually have them grouped up uh, by category. Um, but that's not why we're here. Why we're here is because of Alex the Comic Hoarder, who tagged the entire community for top 50 list. And I really enjoy seeing the community coming together like this and, and just showing a lot of support for each other. So I thought it was a great idea. I wanted to get in on it too. And uh, while we're talking about supporting community, I want to give a quick, quick shout out to a fellow YouTuber who is, uh, just started his own Kickstarter trying to get his very first comic book published. So um, Comic Book Rescue... I'm going to leave a link down to both his uh, announcement video as well as his Kickstarter. So please, by all means, uh, go show some support to him and uh, help him out. In the meantime, uh, we'll get back to my video and my top 50 list. Now, my personal comic book collection, uh, I'm kind of a casual collector, so I don't have... Uh, let's just say my collection is a lot more modest than most of, most of your collections out there that I've seen. So I'm going to be doing mine a little bit differently. Uh, I've only got, for instance, I've only got one comic that's even graded. All the rest of these are going to be raw. But uh, I'm not going to be doing, you know, anything like top dollar comics or, or high value. I don't have a lot of major keys or uh, extremely rare comics, anything like that. What I'm going to do is, regardless of first appearances, regardless of content, regardless of uh, anything inside the comic, we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus strictly on the covers. This is my top 50 favorite comic book covers in my collection. So it's all about the cover art. It's all about the artwork on the front, regardless of the of uh, what's on the inside. So we're going. Uh, we're going to be shallow here. We're going to be skin deep. But uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, these are just. What I like. So this is a placeholder. Uh, this is an old wizard price guide. This isn't one of my favorites, but uh, Wolverine's one of my favorite characters. But we're going to get started here now. And starting things off, uh, I don't really have these in any particular order. They're kind of grouped by tens. So uh, we're going to start off with with some of my favorites. And as we get closer to the, uh, to the end, those are going to be some of my really, really favorites. But uh, Iron Fist, Heart of the Dragon, I just... It's a new comic, but I think it's a great cover. Uh, Iron Fist on there. You got, um, you know, Taskmaster in the background. Just a really great dynamic cover. Let me try and blow through some of these kind of quick because we got 50 to go through. So, another recent one. Black Cat, issue number five. Uh, this is the uh, one of the Amazing Mary Jane variants when they were sticking Mary Jane on a bunch of covers even though she wasn't really uh, part of the comic. I just think this is a really funny uh cover you know with mary jane and and black cat what does he see in you just always a good time for humor uh conan number five from dark horse this is a joseph michael lindsner cover and uh lindsner is a a one of my favorite artists I, I really do like him this is just a very powerful uh piece for conan i think um i used to i got into lindsner years ago when he was doing a lot of his dawn uh, comics and uh, just a fan of his artwork. Uh, we have uh, Avengers vs. X-Men round three. Captain Marvel vs. Rogue and it's J. Scott Campbell. J. Scott Campbell you'll see he's one of my favorite artists so uh, really like that one. Anytime you got Captain Marvel vs. Rogue that's uh, that's something cool. One of my old comics Web of Spider-Man number two uh, nothing super spectacular about this one other than it's kind of nostalgic for me. I remember having this as a little kid. Uh, the Volturions on there, just the bright red and gold colors. And the detail of having Spider-Man with the hat box, which is actually part of the story too. Um, just a, a interesting cover that I, I found interesting as a kid that I really liked. Another one from my youth. The Adventures of Bayou Billy, number five. Uh, I don't know how many of you actually have ever heard of this. This was an old Nintendo game, and uh, they put out a, a small series of comic books, and this is one of my favorite covers with his nemesis, the Black Gator, on there. He's kind of a Crocodile Dundee type of character. Um, but uh, actually, a highly underrated comic book series, in, in my opinion. I kind of wish they'd bring this back. But 
Fantastic Four number 348. I, I mean, come on, you got this classic Arthur Adams cover, you got Wolverine, Hulk, Ghost Rider, and Spider Man all on the cover at the same time. What, what more can you ask for? Just a cool cover. Daredevil number 249. Daredevil and Wolverine. Uh, I mean, again, what else can you say? Um, cool cover. A lot of action in this one. They're they're just fighting. You know something's going on. This kind of starts a bit of a theme here with some action fighting. Uh, Avengers Annual number 22. You've got Blood Wraith versus the Black Knight. And again, just a great action cover. A lot of action in this one. Some of those covers are just really dynamic. Captain America 350. John Walker versus Steve Rogers. There you go. Again, dynamic, bright colors. Red Sonia, the Black Tower. I'm a big Red Sonia fan. I, I've got a lot of Red Sonia. Um, I could probably do a top 50 list of just Red Sonia alone. But uh, the Black Tower, this particular one, just I really like the use of the red with the blood and the hair and, and the way it, the effect that it has on this particular uh, piece of art is just really, really cool. Wolverine number 17, just a classic John Byrne cover, plain red, but Wolverine's coming at you. He's, uh, again, action, 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 really, really cool. You can see a lot of Wolverine, probably. Like I said, you're going to see a lot of Wolverine. Infinity Watch, uh, kind of a, a, nothing too special about it, other than, it's Wolverine's claws coming through the Infinity Gauntlet. I mean, come on. That is just cool. How is that not cool? Mike Mayhew cover. Uh, I, just, I fell in love with this as soon as I saw it. So, just one of my, my favorite covers, even though there's not really a whole lot special about the, uh, the book itself. Here's a recent edition. Geiger number one. Cool cover. I mean, it's. I think it's supposed to glow in the dark. I haven't tried it, but... Uh, Look how cool that is. Just really cool effect with the glow. It's become one of my favorites very quickly. G.I. Joe from the Image Run. Image no, uh, issue number six. I love Storm Shadow. You got Cobra Commander in his, his hood, his classic outfit. You got Storm Shadow behind him. Another great dynamic action pose. Just a cool cover. X-Men from the Jim Lee Run. Issue number five. Wolverine versus Omega Red, and again, action, dynamic, and one of the things I really like about this one is how his, his gloves are torn off right here, and you can kind of see the shafts from, from the claws. I thought that was a really neat effect that he threw in there. Um, just, you know, a lot of detail on that one, and, and again, a lot of dynamic action in that cover. Spawn number nine. This is the book that made me pick up Spawn for the first time. I actually didn't get into Spawn right away. Uh, this was my very first Spawn comic. And I, I think the, the solid white background helped to make it stand out a little bit. Uh, the purple logo really popped. And then just the character of Angela just really stands out to you. Um, it made me want to pick this up and find out what was going on. So always one of my favorite covers. Harley Quinn number 75, a uh, great cover, picture of Margot Robbie, she doesn't usually appear on covers like that, but this is, uh, this is one that she's got where it's an actual photograph of her, so uh, I love her character in Suicide Squad, uh, she did a great job, love the cover. Vampirella number 7, again nothing special about the comic itself, but the, the cover I think is just great, I think that's a, just a beautiful layout and design with the bats forming the wings behind her. Um, just awesome image. Black Cat number 10. Uh, again, J. Scott Campbell. I'm, you're going to find out I'm a big J. Scott Campbell fan. I, I love this one. A Wolverine, Black Cat. I'm a fan of both of them to have them on the cover. And then the, uh, the little exchange between them with the, with the word dialogue thing going on is uh, really cool too. So very humorous. 
Red Sonia, one more day. It's a one. This is a one shot. Growing up, I was a big fan of fantasy artwork, and one of my favorite artists growing up was Frank Frazetta. So anytime I see any type of um, tribute to Frank Frazetta, uh, this is a, a tribute to this Death Dealer. Um, I'm I'm gonna be a fan of it. This is a just a really cool piece. Amazing Spider-Man number three forty six. Uh, classic Eric Larson cover, Venom up close, the teeth, the drool, Spider-Man in the eyes, I mean, just a great cover there. Spider-Man number 10 from the Todd McFarlane run. Uh, what I love about this one is how he presents Wolverine coming out of the shadows. He's mostly covered in shadows, but how he's coming out of the shadows, he just looks absolutely fierce right there. I love his depiction of Wolverine on this cover. Here's another recent edition, Symbiote Spider-Man Alien Reality number one. It's got Hobgoblin on it. I love Hobgoblin and of course it's a great throwback to Amazing Spider-Man number 39. Just a, a classic tribute to a classic cover and I like the take on it. Um, really cool. As soon as I saw it I knew I had to have that one. From my youth, Ghost Rider 15. Um, this one is, let's see, Mark uh, Texera, I believe is his name, uh, for the art cover artist. This was a glow in the dark cover. I bought this when I was younger and, and thought it was, well, this was going to be something special and worth a lot. I don't think it is, but it's still a cool cover. I, I just like the way it looks, and it actually did glow in the dark, which is a pretty cool effect. One of the first times I'd seen that effect on an actual cover. Thundercats, uh, this is again just a very dynamic uh, cover, you know, a lot of action going on even though he's, he's, he's just sitting there kind of holding the doors together, but it's, it's a very dramatic uh, action filled cover. Masters of the Universe, number 12, Here Lies He-Man. Uh, what else can you see? You've got a, a tomb on there, you've got Skeletor in the background, the dark clouds, ominous clouds. It's, it's just a really cool cover. A lot of these covers are, are just really, really make you just want to pick up the issue and find out what's going on on the inside. This one, G.I. Joe number 43. Again, just an outstanding cover. I believe this was a Mike Zeck cover. Mike Zeck did some amazing covers for G.I. Joe. Um, uh, just G.I. Joe had a, a, a run of amazing coverage during this time. Wolverine Black, White, and Blood, issue number one. You know, I really enjoyed this series, and anytime you've got Wolverine tearing through the cover with his claws, uh, it just looks really cool. This is just a cool looking cover. Vampirella and Red Sonia, number seven. I love the the duality here where they're they're splitting them down the middle like this and uh, as soon as i saw it i again i just had to have that one just a cool cool effect on this cover we're getting down now so wolverine origin this is part two uh i gotta admit i'm not a huge fan of the bone claws but i really like this cover just it's a very simple but highly detailed and powerful cover with the claws coming out like that it's just his hand um, just a really really cool cover I, I don't know what else to say about some of these they're just cool covers <laughs> Betty Page Unbound number one I really really like this one is uh, John Royal I believe is the, the artist and it's a neat take on Betty Page kind of doing a cosplay in the Red Sonya outfit uh, just really, really neat. Another J. Scott Campbell here. Amazing Spider-Man. 606. Uh, just one of his classic covers. Black Cat, Mary Jane, you know, Spider-Man on the cover. Uh, that kind of love triangle going on. Just, just a great cover. I just really, really like it. I'd like to get a little bit better version of this one, but... Uh, Glad to have that one. Detective Comics 603. 
Batman and the Demon on there. Uh, the big the capes flying. Great, great cover. Norm uh, Brayfogle, I believe is how you pronounce the artist's name on this one. But uh, I don't collect a lot of Batman, but this this is a this is just an iconic cover to me. Uncanny X Men two twelve. Barry Windsor Smith classic cover. This is Wolverine to me. You know, this is Wolverine and these knockdown drag out fights and this is how he comes out on the other end. Uh, I love seeing this type of stuff and, and that just that personifies Wolverine a Wolverine and Sabretooth battle right there for me. Red Sonia Age of Chaos number two. This is a virgin cover. Again, just great artwork. Uh, I don't, I don't know what else to say other than it's just a beautiful piece of art. Vampirella number one, another Frank Frazetta tribute. Love it. Love the tribute to Frank, Frank Frazetta. Uncanny X-Men 268, classic, classic Jim Lee cover. Captain America, Black Widow, Wolverine, just awesome, awesome team. Red Sonja, I like this one because it's, it's that Frank Miller, uh, you know, Sin City tribute um, in that style, and it just, it just looks really cool, just a cool little tribute. Crisis on Infinite Earth number seven. I wish this one was in better shape than what it is. Unfortunately, it's in pretty bad shape, but what a cover. Um, again, one of those that makes you want to pick it up and figure out what is going on. Okay, we're down to the last ten. This is a great Vampirella cover where it's got the, the it's kind of a uh, see-through top but the, the the top layer has the blood on it so you pull that off and then it's, it's her on the background but it's got the, the dripping blood effect just a really really neat cover love this one moon knight number 200 again i fell in love with this cover as soon as i saw it um great great cover the the use of uh, the black the white and the red as a limited color palette you know really works on a lot of these and it really works on this one. I believe the cover artist is Becky Cloonan on this one. Uncanny X-Men number 12, another J. Scott Campbell. This is an exclusive. Uh, Rogue in the Savage Land. Uh, this is actually part of a, a three-part uh, connecting uh, series of covers. G.I. Joe 75, Ron Wagner cover this time, and just, again, just a great cover with Baroness on the on the hood of the His Tank with Sepentor. Again, it's a cover that makes you want to pick up the book and find out what's going on. Spider-Man number 6 from the Todd McFarlane run. This is probably one of my favorite, if not the favorite, cover that Todd McFarlane has ever done. As far as I'm concerned, uh, my my personal one of my personal favorites. You got Hobgoblin. I love the way he draws Hobgoblin, who's one of my favorite villains for Spider-Man. And this is just a great, great cover. Love it. One of my all-time favorite covers of ever. Transformers number five, Shockwave on the cover. The Transformers are all dead. This is a Mark Bright cover. Probably the most, the single most iconic Transformers cover of all. Infinity Gauntlet number four. Thanos, come and get me. I mean, come on. I love the attitude here. George Perez cover. We're getting down here. Captain America Annual, issue number eight. I, I don't really have anything to say about it. The cover pretty much speaks for itself here. Captain America, Wolverine. This is just a classic, classic cover.
G.I. Joe number 46, another Mike Zek cover, and just another outstanding, amazing piece of artwork that makes you want to pick it up and, and read it. Storm Shadow, Snake Eyes, busting through the door together side by side. What else do you want on that? And now my final one. I think this should be number 50. Another J. Scott Campbell. Uh, this is the only graded comic that I own right now. Hunt for Wolverine, uh, signature version. Uh, I love this cover. I love Wolverine. He's my favorite character. Uh, J. Scott Campbell is one of my favorite artists. And this cover is just absolutely stunning to me. I love it. So There you go. That was my top 50. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And feel free to tag some other people and keep this thing going. I love seeing the community come together like this. Uh, be sure to check out those links in the description, and if you want to uh, watch some more of my videos and see some more of my collection, by all means, go check them out. Hit and like and subscribe is always appreciated. Take care, and collect what you love.